Welcome back everybody. Today is time to build a cave. Now I did this for a project that I was working on. The geometry of the cave is actually pretty simple. A lot of the detail comes from the displacement added in Redshift later down the line. I'm going to be showing you how to kind of set up things so you can do that, uh, you know, with proper UVs and everything. So let's get started. So let's drop down a, a tube set the type to polygon and then I'm going to put this out on Z and I'm going to scale this as well and then I'm going to add some geometry to it this might be too much but we'll see and we're trying to get it so we have squares here so we get a nice even displacement and then also when we subdivide it with redshift or whatever if you want to do it in Houdini, all good. Then we get a nice subdivision that isn't all weird. So that is looking good. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to stick a lovely UV texture onto this. And then I'm going to put a UV quick shade down. Now by default, this is just going to be doing some orthographic mapping, but we want cylindrical make sure you set this to Z and you've got this ugly zoom here which you can fix by clicking that and as you can see our UVs are pretty ugly I don't like these so what I'm going to do is I'm going to scale this until we get cubes again or squares like so uh, it's looking all right might actually need a longer tube so what we could do is we could take build a little, little setup so we don't have to um, we can make this procedural essentially copy this and times the height and then divide the value in our UV texture or do I times it? That's the one. So now we have a nice value we can increase and decrease that will procedurally change the UV texture which is very useful, very nice. And I'm gonna get rid of our UV, I'll keep it for the minute actually. Um, and I'm gonna put down a bend now a nice little deformer and by default it will visualize the fall off so some of the options in here are the up vector if you bend you'll be able to see what's happening so it's going to bend up and the capture direction is a direction it's going to bend in so we want minus y and we want minus x so it bends like this so i create a little tunnel and then we're going to turn up the length scale Oops what's it uh the capture length sorry and you can also click enter to get these visual handles up that you can use to drag this object back as well i'm going to be doing minus or plus 90 sorry turn up the capture length a little bit i just don't want any stretching in our uvs here and also we'll have some issues with you know we don't have the same topology as we have over here which kind of sucks but as long as we have a very long tube, this will be fine. So let's turn on up the capture length, drag this back in X, and there we go. We've got it. So I'm going to turn off the visualize fall off, and I'm also going to switch off our UV quick shade by bypassing it. One thing I didn't remember to do in our wither setup is timesing the rows by our multiplier. So that should be fixed now. And then finally, we're gonna put down a point triangle to create, create a ramp. 
uh, and I'm going to put bounding box in front of it. So the way that we create a bounding box using the ranges here, we can either guess the ranges um, from what we see, or we can do it mathematically or with Houdini, I guess. Um, so I'm going to create a vector called bounding box, and that's going to be equal to rel, bound, uh, rel box, this thing. And we're going to set that to zero, the input, and at p, which is the position. So now we've got a vector and we can select x, y, and z here. We need y, because what I'm trying to do here is when we displace this, I don't want to displace the bottom of it, I just want to displace the top. Sort of like the bottom has been eroded uh, by a, a lake or a river inside this cave. So if I do f at ramp, it's just going to be a float it's called ramp. And then we're going to create a ramp channel. I'm going to call it ramp because I'm lazy. And we're going to ramp bbx.y. So that's this attribute, uh, which is a vector. And we're getting the second float, which is y. Close this out. And then we're going to be setting at cd because I like to visualize things as ramp. Pray for that man. So then we're going to turn on the create spare parameters and now we've got a ramp on Y. So let's drag this. We could add some interpolation to this if you wanted. Using this drop down. Uh, even before this, I might actually want to, I, I did edit this a little bit. So before all the bending and all that stuff, I actually drag the bottom of this up a little bit, which I'm going to do. So I'm going to group this using a bounding box. I'm going to be grouping points by bounding box. And we're just going to scale this and then we're going to do like an infinite size on Z. Another way we could do this is with a group expression. Uh, just for um, argument's sake, we could do a group expression like this. Points, where is it? And we could do at p.y is under zero. And it will select everything under zero on position y. So that's another useful way of doing it. But I'm going to use a bounding box so it's nice and visual and we can drag this up and down if we've got this little show handle option selected. So maybe not that much. Uh, I think that should be fine. I'm going to drop down a transform. And select our group. And then I'm going to scale it down on Y. And then pull it down on Y as well. Maybe not that much just so we get a little bit of a flat bottom on this object. She ain't thick. So now we've got the cave, the topology is looking good. Try and make sure that you've got some, you know, you don't have like overlapping polygons or anything, but that is looking good. And now when we bend this, it should work fine still. And then we put it through a ramp. It should be using the bit, the round, uh, the, the range of our object here. So something like that maybe. And now we're going to be displacing this with a point VOP. And like I mentioned prior to this, the point VOP is essentially a visual representation of VEX. Um, and for certain things, in particular noises in my opinion, are much easier to do in VOPs. So why did I type in point VOP? So what we could use is an anti-alias noise, or in the case of my, t my actual project, I use a unified noise a bunch of them combined together. So inside here, you can multiply, you can add, um, you can divide, you know, it's, it is essentially VEX and you can multiply and divide stuff together to create some nice stuff. But I'm just going to be doing it very simple with an anti-alias noise, plugging that into a position and then fitting it because by default, our range here is going to be going into the negative with an anti-alias noise. So I don't want that. Uh, I'm going to put it down and displace it along normal, which is a new thing to us. We've not talked about this, but it does what it says in the tin. 
it's going to take our normals, which you can visualize by doing that. I'm also going to reverse these as well because in my setup, I use a subsurface material. And if you don't reverse your normals, then your subsurface doesn't really work that well because we're going to be inside this cave, obviously. So now they're reversed. You can see that happening there. And then we're going to be displacing by putting the noise into our mount and getting the position and putting that into our output position. Now we've got this crazy displacement uh, on our object. Maybe, yeah, maybe no fit is okay because displacing back as well is, is all right, I think, in this case. So I'm going to turn down. Of course, I want the smoke. Um, I'm going to turn down the, the roughness. And then also what the reason that I made that um, that bounding box color thing is so I can multiply these objects together. So if I put down a multiply, stick this in here and just for visual, I'm going to swap these inputs by doing shift R and then dragging this into our position here. That didn't work. We do this and then put that into our mount. Didn't mean to bypass that put that into our position. So there you go. Take a good long look. So that's going to be our cave there in its simple form. So yeah, you can also, what I did in my, uh, in my actual setup was I created a line. Uh, and the reason I did this was so that um, I could actually run a camera through this object. So what I did was I created a tube, obviously copied the height, put that into our length, and let's see what's happening. So we need this on minus Z. And then also uh, I'm gonna run this through our same Bend. I'm going to be showing you a new thing today, which is create reference copy. You see, I've got a shortcut for it. And what this is going to do is it's going to create an exact copy with everything here brought over uh, into our object. And basically it's all referenced. So it's just a shortcut to referencing everything. So now if I bend this, then we're going to get some, the same results, I guess, but the main issue with this is that our line is not centered, but our tube is. So we can use one of our expressions to center on Z. And there we go, since there's only two points here, we've got the start and the end point, but nothing more. And then we've got our line here. So now what we can do is in the camera, you can actually add a constraint which would be follow path, which is very useful and allows you to bank the camera as well, depending on the normal. So what we can do is we could add like a poly frame. And basically what I'm trying to do is you see these normals here, I want this to be facing the direction that, well, basically following the curve along. So the way I do that is I set the normal to the up vector and set the tangent to normal. And there we have it, it's following this spline or this curve all the way along, facing the right direction. Uh, and finally, 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 I'll let you go in a minute. What you can do in, in point bobs, if you wanted to animate this, for example, you can animate like the offset or something like that. Or if you're using a different object cause of flow noise, it's actually got an option to animate. So essentially an animation version of the anti-alias noise. It's quite nice. So what if I wanted to animate the flow? Where is it? Here. What I could do is I could put $F in there, but it won't work. And the reason for that is that you can't actually animate any properties in here. So what you've got to do is you've got to middle click on one of these. So like the flow noise or the, the flow parameter, promote the parameter, and this parameter is grayed out now and it will be actually on our surface here. And as you can see, if I put 
dollar t in there we've got animation happening all fine so it's going to be on this level uh, and the final tip i'll give you um, if you want to promote all of these so if you've got a massive node and you want to promote every single option you right click go vexvop options and create input parameters and it will promote all of these automatically for you you don't have to do any extra effort so yeah thanks for watching see you in the next one bye